Today I'm gonna to answer a question that I get all the time, and that is, when do I use vacuum and when do I use pressure? Can I, do I have to have both? Can I use vacuum for rubber and resin? Can I use pressure? How does it work? Why does it work that way? And I get this question so often that I'm making this video just so the next time I get it asked, I can just send a link. Here, watch this. This explains it all. Let's talk about vacuum first, because that's what you do first in the process of making a mold. This is my vacuum chamber. All it is is a giant cooking pot that I got at a restaurant supply place. And I made this lid, cut it out of one inch thick plexiglass so you could see what's going on inside the tank, routed out this channel and uh, filled it with platinum rubber. And that makes a perfect seal on top of the chamber. Down below is an industrial vacuum pump. Here's a look down inside the chamber where this thing will actually de-air a five gallon bucket. The pump creates this vacuum inside the chamber. And that's why you don't need locks or clamps or anything to hold the lid on. Air pressure coming down on top of the lid pushes down. First you mix the rubber, then you put it in the tank. The air is on the pressure in the tank. And the bubbles that are trapped inside the bubble start to expand. They get a lot bigger. In fact, they get amazingly bigger. Little teeny tiny bubbles become quite large. With a larger surface area, they rise up out of the rubber a lot faster. So you have to have at least twice as much room in the container as you have rubber to allow for the expansion and rising of the rubber mass. If you use a, a tall, thin container, the bubbles at the bottom have a long, long way to rise up before they get to the top. If you use a flat container like this and you put in there, the surface area is much bigger and the distance the air bubble has to travel to break out is much shorter. So what that means is you can de-air rubber faster in a shallow pan than you can in a tall cup. Uh, the other advantage to, to a shallow container is if you don't have a vacuum pump at all, pour your rubber out into a shallow container and blow on it, agitate it, and the bubbles only have a short distance to rise so that you have a much better chance of getting more bubbles out of your rubber. So I use the vacuum chamber to de-air rubber while making the mold. I use pressure in the process of pouring the resin. And what it does, essentially, its main job is to suppress the formation of bubbles in the resin. Here's what resin looks like when it's foaming. I mix the A and the B side, and it's making the curing reaction, but water vapor has gotten into this resin, and it gets in the way of the... I, I can't explain the chemistry of this. If water vapor gets into your resin, it's going to foam. It's a, unless you want this effect, this is a disaster. But look at the power of the pressure pot. This is the exact same batch of resin. And I saved some of the resin in the cup. From this cup, I still had some resin left over. This resin, I put into the pressure pot. And that is the difference. This is the power of a pressure pot. No pressure pot, pressure. The pressure pot prevents the formation of bubbles in your resin. That's its main job. Here's another example. Here's no pressure pot cure. Here's pressure pot cure. Look at the difference that a pressure pot makes. That's why I have pressure pots. So we're done, right? Video over. Everyone understands it. Uh, not quite. The easiest way to remember the difference between vacuum and pressure is one sucks and the other one blows. Vacuums suck air through a pipe. Compressors blow air through a pipe. So a vacuum chamber and a pressure pot are essentially doing the same job of removing air bubbles, but those air bubbles are formed in a completely different way and they're removed in a completely different way. The two things are not interchangeable. But now I'm listening to the howling in the comments <laughs> because people ask me all the time, why don't I put the model in the mold case, pour the rubber around it, don't bother to de-air it, don't do anything, just pour the rubber around the model and then either stick the whole thing in a pressure pot and let it cure, or put it in the vacuum chamber and pull out all the bubbles all at once, because not only will it pull out all the bubbles, it'll also pull out any of the details and any, all the little details and fine surfaces. It'll pull all the air out, boom, you're done. Why don't I do that? Well, the reason is I don't know how that model was constructed. I get models in from YouTube viewers, from clients, and I have no idea how it was made. I don't know what's going on inside of the model. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is a very typical sculpture armature. The first step is to cover the armature in clay, but you can just see the problem you're gonna have. I'm gonna wrap the clay around this head like that. Just start to you know, wrap the clay around the model. Let me ask you a question. Is there any air trapped inside that head? 
This is typically how sculptors work. They wrap their clay around the model, like this, and they just push the clay on, and they do that. It doesn't matter if you're using Sculpey, or oil clay, or Magic Sculpt, or any of those things. It really doesn't matter. Monster clay, it's all the same thing. There's no way that this clay sculpture isn't absolutely full of air. So what do you think happens when you subject a sculpture to pressure or vacuum? In a pressure pot, the rubber would just crush down into, into the model and just either crumple it or distort it or just generally wreak havoc. Also, it would be thoroughly infused inside the model, so cutting it out would be virtually impossible. What about vacuum? Same exact problem, except in reverse. All of the air that's trapped in there is gonna to wanna to come out. It's gonna to wanna to expand and come out. If you were lucky, it would come out of some little hole. Out of, the whole thing would suck out as one little hole, but you're not gonna be lucky. It's gonna have pockets of air trapped all around it, and each and every one of those pockets is gonna expand. If it's clay, it could just expand out the clay until it breaks, but then what happens? Now you've got voids inside the model that are vacuums. Guess what? Guess where all the rubber goes? Now you have... <laughs> Now you have a model that's completely infused with rubber. It's just bond. It's, it's one with the rubber. Don't do this. I t I'm telling you, the worst thing that you can do is take a sculpture, a sculpture as a mold maker, is to take a sculpture from somebody that they've spent hundreds of hours on and they're incredibly proud of, and uh, you put it in your pressure pot and you just smush it. <laughs> you just, just crush it. Don't do that. Seriously, don't do it. Not only is it risky business, it's also completely unnecessary. You do not ever subject your original model to pressure or vacuum, ever, 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 because you might destroy it. The reason resin foams is that it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. That's why you never want to come to work in the morning and find your lids like this. Just sit. Oh yeah. Oh, I used to do this in the beginning when I started. I'm just too lazy. Yeah, whatever. It's fine. That's fine. This kills your resin worse than anything else. So make sure when you come, when you're done, when you're with each pour, tight, seal tight. Same thing with the A side. One of the problems with the A side is that it will harden without any B side. It'll get if the crusties. So if you get crusties or drips around the rim, you get this crust that builds up. So even if you wipe in or careful, you'll get this crust that builds up. So very often when I come in, this is tight enough that there's no way I can open it. Not anymore, maybe I could 30 years ago, but I can't now. <laughs> there's no way I can open it. I keep a tool, I keep this wrench. This wrench does one job in my shop. It opens the A side. Completely changed my life. I don't struggle with containers anymore. All right, let's do some science. I got three cups. I got the control, I got a vacuum cup, and a pressure cup. So let's mix some resin, pour them in there, put them in the machines, and see what happens. Okay, let's see how we did. Here's our control cup, which meant we didn't put it in vac, we didn't put it in pressure, we didn't do anything. We just let it be. And I'm going to say, I'm reasonably proud of that. <laughs> uh, this is a testimony to how well I keep my tops on my jars. Caught a couple little bubbles, rose up to the top, and there are pin bubbles on the surface. But that's not terrible. If you don't have vacuum and pressure systems, you can get reasonably good castings even without the tools. Let's look at the vacuum cup. <laughs> I see troubles ahead. Uh, people ask me all the time why I don't I vac the resin, and I tell them it doesn't work. My resin in this batch was quick cast, and it lives up to its name. It sets up quick, but you can see what happens. A tremendous amount of air gets sucked out by the vacuum, but the resin cures up before the vacuum has a chance to finish its job. This is why I don't vacuum my resin. This is the pressure pot one, and it is exactly as I expected it to be. It's absolutely bubble free. There wasn't a lot of air in here, but there was some. There was some light foaming. There was some small mixing bubbles in there. They were in here too, 
and the pressure pot completely suppress them. This is why I don't use vacuum on resin. This is why I use pressure on resin. I hope this video doesn't discourage anyone. With good technique and fresh materials, you can make reasonably clean castings. The point of the machines are to make it fast and make it reliable. Even though I have industrial grade machines for a production shop, you don't need them. This is the vacuum system that I use in my home shop and I just bought it off Amazon. And uh, here's the compressor that I use at home for the hobbyist, for the home caster, for the small production shop. This glass of machine works just as well. So don't get discouraged if you see the kind of production industrial machinery that I use or some other shop uses. A really big vacuum pump. This particular unit is our 115 gallon unit with the optional Hany hose reel. Hey, if you like this video, watch this video next. <laughs> Hope you learned something out of this and I will see you next week. Will they love it? Who knows? Will they hate it? Most likely. Oh. She blinded me with science.